Dr. James Gilmore. I am an assistant professor of media and technology studies here in the Department of Communication. Lots of low stakes participation elements. So I use things like writing reflections, brainstorming, uh, opportunities to reflect on how we might connect our personal experiences to the material we are learning. I teach a lot of really complicated, heavy things in courses like critical cultural theory. And it's really important for me to students, for students to feel like they can enter into that material through their personal experiences, right? Or through voicing their frustrations about the material or through just saying, you know, this sentence in the reading caught my eye. I don't really know what it means. I'm not sure, but it caught my eye and I'd like us to talk about it, making sure that they feel comfortable to not walk into a classroom having the answers to anything necessarily, but being open to exploring how to start building those uh, connections. I also love giving students ways to uh, connect the material to things that they are interested in through doing presentations, through writing papers that ask them to take their own interests, their own passions, their own professional aspirations and find bridges between the things that we talk about in our course uh, and the things that most interest and excite them. I love connecting with students. Uh, you know, the kind of super optimistic line that I like to say is that we all want to change the world. And the sentimentalist in me does believe that teaching is a way to change the world. I really want my students to be able to hold together the complexity of the world by the time they leave my classes. I always tell students that we are investing creating tensions or we're exploring things that might seem contradictory. I want them to stop thinking about the world in terms of binaries, good and evil, right and wrong, um, bad or great, and start really getting into what does it mean for something to be both of those things at once or even more things at once? How can we hold together this sort of multiplicity, the tensions and the chaos of the world in the way that we think about issues in communication, media, technology? The simple answer is just participating in it. You know, the, the kind of longer form answer there is that my classes are really structured where you, know, you get what you give. If you're somebody who shows up, asks questions, vocalizes their concerns, you know, even if you don't think you know what you're talking about, just to say, you know, I had an idea and I'd like to share it with the class. I was thinking about this connection and I'd like to throw it out on the table for us to talk about. Students who do that, tend to do a lot better in my classes because they're willing to be part of the system of the class. You know, this is all a process where we move from, you know, brainstorming and lower stakes stuff into really interrogating complicated things. And you know, if you buckle up and you're along for the ride, chances are you're going to do really well. And I've been thinking about a lot more in the past year with the COVID pandemic and recognizing students who are having all sorts of problems with precarity, you know, health issues and families, financial precarity, loss of work. And, you know, I, I never want to be someone who's badgering students, but I want them to feel like they can come to me and I will accommodate them. I will help them if they are struggling. I want them to know and to feel honestly that I will set aside time to work with them or to help direct them to resources at the university that can help them if I can't. Uh, I'm not someone who can solve all of their problems, but I am someone who is a huge cheerleader and supporter of my students and trying to create a space where even though the work we do is really intense and kind of daunting week to week, uh, I can be someone who they hopefully see anyway as trustworthy and worthy of confiding in if they need to. And in the summertime, my online classes are all asynchronous, so that they're distributed week by week. Students are given sets of lectures and readings and small assignments to complete. And I really like the flexibility that that allows. Asynchronous online classes I actually really love uh, because students are trying to accomplish a lot especially in the summer, mean, during the academic year as well, but also in the summer and being able to build in classroom settings where they have the freedom to you know, 
know, spread out the work across seven days or sit down and hunker down with it for two days if they need to. That kind of flexibility you just can't get in the sort of weekly semesterly schedule. So I really like the affordances of asynchronous online teaching. And it might sound weird, but I miss the silences that come in physical classes when you ask a tough question, kind of try and knock everybody back for a second and kind of let them sit and think through things. I like watching people think through complicated questions and then start to venture an answer. And on Zoom, silences feel different. Uh, they feel more deafening and alienating. And I think it's just, you know, this larger pattern that I've seen where online classes really re-architect the entire social experience of college. You know, some of the stuff that I love most about teaching are conversations in the hallway to and from class, um, doing chit chat in the minutes before class, learning more about students and those kind of banal moments that we kind of take for granted, but they really do help build classroom communities so that when we ask students to sit in silence and think about a really hard question, you know, they hopefully sense that we can build a classroom community and we're all in it together. I found creating that sort of experience is just harder to do on Zoom. My wife actually gave birth to twin girls in July, so my quarantine hobby has been learning how to be a dad. I'm really looking forward to just those fleeting hallway interactions, right? I'm really looking forward to students popping their heads around the corner of my office door and asking if they can come in and talk for a minute. You know, I really miss that one-on-one -on -one engagement. You know, I, I'm staring at a little dot on my computer that's a webcam to talk to you right now, and that's great and wonderful, but it just isn't the same kind of space that you can make where you're really working through a problem with a student face-to-face -face in your office and where you can really kind of help them have that light bulb go off. And I'm missing all the moments like that, and I can't wait for them to get back. I like to say that I study how technology and culture shape one another. That's to say how our ways of doing things uh, relate to our ways of living and vice versa. I study how institutions, companies, and governments claim to use technologies of all sorts, including digital platforms, wearable technologies, and other technical infrastructures uh, to produce knowledge claims about the everyday lives of people under their care. So my, my work straddles media studies, cultural studies, science and technology studies. I use critical approaches to contextualize the way that we imagine these sorts of devices and systems, and then the implications of those imaginaries uh, in terms of their power effects and how they have the potential to re-architect our daily lives. I really like how collegial our department is. We have a very friendly atmosphere. Um, and this is also, at least I hope, extended to the ways that we interact with our students. I think that our students, at least I hope they do, more or less find the faculty to be accessible and helpful. Um, that's, I think, given me more opportunities to work closely with undergraduate and graduate students on research projects. Um, as part of smaller research teams to advise them more directly. Um, that sort of relationship building is really important to me. And I'm very grateful that I work in a department that really values that. I love being in the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains. I grew up in Roanoke, Virginia, which is in the heart of the Blue Ridge Mountains. Uh, and it kind of felt like coming home in a lot of ways. I did my PhD at Indiana University where there really weren't any mountains and the winters were awful. So, you know, being able to, uh, you know, see a foothill of the Blue Ridge Mountains from my house, um, you know, not feel like I'm going to freeze every time I leave my house already wearing a heavy jacket in January. I like those things about being here. It feels very much like home. The thing that sticks out in my mind are all of the moments where students send me emails or come to my office and tell me that 
they got into that graduate program or they got the job that they were applying for. You know, spring is a really, really exciting semester because we have students about to graduate. We have students about to go on to graduate programs. And, you know, I really do think about all of the excitement that brims when a student comes to you and says, I got into that program or I got that job. Um, you know, as much as I love, love, love everything I get to do in the classroom and everything you get to do with research, um, you know, those moments really stick out to you to really see people getting ready to leave punks and excited and thrilled about their next steps. Um, those are, I don't know if it's the favorite, uh, but it's the one that sticks out most to me. I think communication is one of the best majors that you can choose. So, hey, congratulations for choosing communication as your field of study. Um, but I think that when students do, they sometimes fall into the trap of thinking that it's a hyper-professionalization degree, right? They're going to learn how to do social media campaigns and PR writing and kind of nuts and bolts stuff. And that's um, the most important to get a successful job. And I'm not putting those things down. They are incredibly important to the skills that you get as part of a communication degree. But at the same time, uh, you have chosen to pursue a degree in communication at a research university where a significant number of our faculty are actively involved in research agendas. And you know, if you're able to get involved with that kind of work, you can learn lots of research skills that may not be available to other students at other universities. Right? You can learn how to design and execute a study. You can learn how to do more rigorous critical analysis. Um, you know, last year, I started through our Creative Inquiry program a collaborative on communication and culture that allows undergraduates to form research teams and work under my direction to study things that they care about. In the last year, we've studied things like uh, a digital mental wellness uh, application and the way that it communicates different sorts of things about mental health care to undergraduate students. Uh, we've studied how corporation, corporate advertising, public relations statements responded to uh, the Black Lives Matter events from this past summer. Uh, we've studied how Clemson undergraduates responded to and negotiate the use of Zoom in the fall 2020 semester. And this semester, we're studying the ways that um, individuals produced and transmitted uh, videos through different online platforms during the January 6th Capitol riots. Um, these are all projects that students decided that they wanted to study and they formed small research teams four to seven, and it's been my pleasure to direct them on these things. And we're trying to publish the studies from last year right now. Uh, and that's, you know, just me. There are lots of other faculty members who have their own research agendas and who love working with students. And, you know, to see research not as just something that you have to do to complete final papers or things like that, but as a real opportunity to learn, um, you know, what, what kind of skills can I pick up here that can help me do all sorts of kind of work beyond just the nuts and bolts stuff that you expect to learn as part of a communication degree? That's a highly valuable. And I just really encourage you, if you click with a professor, um, if you take someone's class and you love it, send an email to them. Say, you know, what are you working on right now? What could I get involved with? That's all it takes. And it can open up all sorts of doors for you.